Hello and welcome to the Dragon Den. I'm King of Dragons 5000 and today I have another action figure review. Today I'll be taking a look at the Marvel Legends Carnage from the movie Venom Let There Be Carnage. Getting Carnage out of the packaging, the first thing you notice is that he is quite a massive figure. Just like in the movie, this version of Carnage is going to have some substantial size over the rest of your collection and I'm all for it as I really did love the rendition of Carnage from the movie. Having a look at Carnage's accessories, he does come with two different head sculpts. As well as a pair of hands, a hand that's turning into a scythe and an already transformed scythe hand. And finally, Carnage is going to have three different versions of the tendrils which all look really good that connect onto his back. Having a look at Carnage's details, I'm actually really impressed by the amount of details that Hasbro put into this one figure. The sculpt work on Carnage is absolutely fantastic and it's quite solid the way they did it. Having a look at the head, I'm really impressed by this head sculpt here on Carnage. It has a lot of impressive detail from the sculpt work in the eyes which are painted in this really nice pearlized white. And you can see that his teeth are done in this off-white color and they are sculpted really nicely with a tongue coming out of his mouth. I especially love the membrane on the side of his mouth which looks really good here on Carnage. As we move to the body you can see that Hasbro actually made an attempt to give Carnage some really impressive paintwork. However, it's not the cleanest paint job that we've seen and although it does look decent here in the front, unfortunately they didn't paint any detail on his back. The sculpt work here on Carnage is actually impressive as we do get a lot of detail on the musculature. Add to it we do get these veins that go throughout his body which add a creep factor here to Carnage. His arms will carry over that impressive sculpt work where we have the musculature looking really good with the veins on his arms as well. I do like the fact that you can see some tendrils starting to form on his arms and Hasbro did paint the front of his arms but once again the back of his arms don't have any paint. As you get to the forearms you can see some more tendrils starting to form and Hasbro surprisingly painted both the front and back of his forearms. And his hands is sculpted in this outstretched clawing position which looks really good and I like the fact that there's a hole in each of his hands. His legs will continue that impressive sculpt work where we have some more detailing here on his skin. The sculpted detail is really good here as well as we continue to see those veins going throughout his legs. And just like with his arms you can see some tendrils starting to form on his legs. One thing to note is that Hasbro did paint the front and back of his thighs however his calves only have paint on the front. And then we do have some more small tendrils on his calves which do look really good and they are a softer plastic. And as we get to the feet the sculpt work here is still really good and they did add some paint to his feet as well. Overall the sculpt work on Carnage is quite impressive as it does a good job capturing that fleshy look that he had in the movie. Where the figure does fall down a few pegs is in the paint job where it is only in the front which is a little bit jarring when you have a look at the back of the figure. And it is quite heavy handed in the front, a little bit of subtlety would have gone a long way here on Carnage. With the paint and details out of the way, let's compare Carnage to our usual suspects. Because this is the movie version of Carnage, he is going to tower over the rest of your collection. Even though I feel like the Carnage in the movie was slightly taller, they still did a really good job scaling him with the rest of your Marvel Legends. And because he's almost 9 inches tall, he is going to be quite taller than the Marvel Legends Venom figure. Having a look at his articulation, Carnage is going to have a double ball joint in the head and neck. Arms go out to the side and do a full 360. He will have a bicep swivel as well as double jointed elbows. He will have a standard hinge and swivel at his wrist. Carnage does have a ball joint in his upper torso and a reverse ab crunch. His legs do kick forward, go back, out to the side and have a thigh swivel. He is going to have a double bend in the knee. 
He will have a hinge in the ankle and forward facing pin for rocker ankle. And finally all of his tendrils are going to have a wire frame. Overall the articulation on Carnage is going to be rather impressive and you can get him in some great poses despite the fact he's a pretty big figure. The only piece of articulation I feel that Carnage is lacking is a butterfly joint as that would have done a really good job improving his mobility. With everything said and done about the Marvel Legends, let there be Carnage Carnage, let's get him posed for my final thoughts. One of my favorite Spider-Man villains is Carnage and it was really good to see him on the big screen. It is surprising to note that even though he is taller than Venom, his body frame is actually slender so if you were to scale him to Venom's size, he would actually be a little bit more slender. I do gotta commend Hasbro on the sculpted detailing here on Carnage as it rivals that on Venom and I love the way it looks and replicates that fleshy details that we saw in the movie. The added details with the tendrils coming off of his arms and legs is done very well and they did a really good job with that. And I love the accessories that Carnage comes with all the way down from the bendy wire and the tendrils to the scythe hands. Although to be quite honest I would have loved to see a different weapon for one of the hands but they do work perfectly here for Carnage. Where I feel this figure fails is in the paint job, although I do like the fact that Hasbro did give some black paint on this Carnage, I would have loved to see a little more care given into it. As the paint is only present on the front of the figure and in sparse parts on his back, it is quite noticeable that Hasbro didn't really do the good job painting Carnage. Carnage could have been a much better figure if Hasbro had taken the time to give him a decent paint job giving him some really good highs and lows with that black paint would have been fantastic. But because Hasbro will Hasbro whenever the Hasbro can they did unfortunately not paint the back of Carnage. That's not to say that he's not a good figure I still like the way he came out and he does pair well with Venom. Being a deluxe figure, Carnage is normally going to run you about $50, however I was lucky to get him on sale on the Target website where I did pick him and Venom up. I will say I would have paid full price for this figure as well, but getting him on a sale I think he's well worth the price of $25. Thank you for watching another video here on the Dragon Den. Before you go, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, and check out the rest of my Marvel Legend videos. If you're in a position to help out the Dragon Den, check out my Patreon where I have some exclusive content and early access videos. And check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos, videos, recent pickups, latest prints, and as always, ring that bell so you never miss another video. And until next time, my loyal Dragonites coming from the Dragon Den, I'm King of Dragons 5000 reminding you to redesign, rebuild, and reclaim. I'll see you next time.